Today, we're going to learn what hybridization means. What does it mean when we say a molecule is sp, sp2, or sp3 hybridization? Hopefully, after watching this today, it'll make a little bit of sense to you. Well, first thing, I've made a, a couple changes to the chart that I gave you on the back of your calendar. Uh, if you notice, what I did is I included a column that says on it electron geometry, which is right here. Hopefully, that'll make, like, make a little bit more sense. And also, I put electron domains here. Notice that SP applies to anything that is linear and has two electron domains. So basically, if you count two electron domains, it's SP. And then the other thing is if you count three electron domains, anything that has three electron domains and the electron geometry of trigonal planar is going to be SP2. Now, of course, this applies anything that's SP2 is going to be the molecular shape would be trigonal planar or bent. Now, anything that's SP3 has four electron domains and the electron geometry is tetrahedral. And notice the molecular geometry has could be one of three things, tetrahedral, trigonal pyramidal, or bent. So we're going to go over examples of each. So first of all, where do we get these S and P from? Well, if you recall, we've talked about orbitals being S, P, D, and F. Well, the orbitals that are valence are always S and P. And we call it S, P because that's where the electrons are found. So let's consider beryllium. If you think of back to, if you had to do electron configuration of beryllium, it'd be 1s2, 2s2. Now, it doesn't seem like beryllium would bond because if you look, both these orbitals are full. There's two electrons in 1s, and there's two electrons in 2s. There's really nowhere to electrons to go, to go, but we know that beryllium actually does form bonds. So, what happens, what's theorized is one of those electrons from 1s2, 2s2, when it gains energy, it actually moves, the s1 goes into, a two, uh, into an empty 2p orbital. And so, what happens, you actually have two electrons in 1s, one electron in 2s, then one electron in 2p. So this hybrid orbital, orbital that's created is referred to as sp. It's referred to as sp because it contains 1s and 1p orbital, one from the 2s, one from the 2p. Notice this 2p, these 2p's are empty, but there's only two of them. So this would be the, what the hybrid orbital, orbital diagram would look like for beryllium. So what does this mean? Well, this hybrid orbital, uh, two important things, is that it's an sp orbital, that it's linear, and that there are two electron domains. So you'll see these electrons, these are, this is electron crowds, these electrons are negative, and they're going to repel each other and get as far away from each other as possible. They're going to be 180 degrees. So let's look, go through, uh, so this is, once again, BEF2. And so if you count the electron domains, there are, and you remember, you only count electron domains around your central atom. Beryllium is your central atom. There's one, two electron domains. So that gives us sp hybridization. With any sp hybridization, the angle would be 180, and the shape would always be linear. So next, let's go to the next type of hybrid orbital. So we did sp. Next, we'll do sp2. Now, the thing that we know that bonds sp2 pretty often is boron. Boron is one of those things, just like beryllium. Beryllium is, can have four valence electrons. Boron can have six. And, be, and because of that, it has sp2 hybridization. Now, how does this work? Well, here we have the electron configuration for boron in the normal state. But one of these 2s electrons moves up into the 2p. And when you do that, you get 2s1, 2p2. Now, what happens, the hybridization is counted because it takes that 2s orbital and two of those 2p orbitals, and it creates a hybrid or orbital, which we call an sp2 orbital. And that's, what, that's where the electrons are found, and that's why it forms three bonds. One, two, three. Now, these are covalent molecules, and they bring in electrons, and they share those electrons and form bonds there, and that's how these different atoms combine with more, like BF3, BH3. So let's look at the, uh, so the three degenerate hybrid orbitals. Now remember, what shape would it have? Well, if you have three electrons, we're going to get as far away from each other as possible. So think about the shape here, what the angle and shape would be. The, the angle here for each one of these is going to be 120 degrees, and the shape is going to be trigonal planar. So the trigonal planar shape is the shape we think of for the electrons, specifically when you form that shape with something like BF3 or BH3. So last we talk about hybrid orbital where, where you get sp3. The, the best example for this, or the one that's really common, is carbon. Carbon has this electron configuration, 1s2, 2s2, 
2p2. We know from work with the models, if you remember, the model of carbon has, is black and has four holes. So we know carbon forms four bonds. Well, how does that work? If we look at the regular configuration of carbon, there's a fill 2s and two empty uh, or two orbitals that are 2p that have one electron. We know it forms four bonds. If you look at this, it looks like it only form two bonds. Well, what happens, one of these electrons from 2s goes into the 2p. So now you see we have electron in, one electron in 2s and one electron in each of the two p's. These hybridize, and together they form what we call sp3. It contains 1s and 3p orbitals, and that's where the, the p3 comes from. So what, what we're going to do now is look at different molecules. I'm going to flash up a picture, assume you, you're able to draw them. I'd like you to tell me how many electron domains there are, and then what's the hybridization. So here we have this one. Now we actually did this in lab. We did this molecule. It's uh, CH2O. And so how many electron domains? You can stop the tape and, as we go, but I'm going to uh, continually answer each of these. But if you'd like to stop it and answer it, that'd probably be a good idea as well. So if we st count the electron domains, there's one. There's two. And remember, multiple bonds count as one. So there's three electron domains. So we have three electron domains. And with three electron domains, hopefully you know, remember the hybridization for that would be sp2. It contains 1s and 2p orbitals. Let's do another structure. This is one that was on last night's video. We want to count the electron domains here. And this is a good example because it shows us the different things that are counted as electron domains. Double bonds are counted as electron domains. That's one. Lone pairs are counted as electron domains. That's two. And single bonds are counted as the electron domains. So that's three. So we have three electron domains. So this also would be sp2. Let's do another one. Now, once again, I want to pull up the chart. Real quickly, what you want to notice is count electron domains. Anything with two electron domains is linear in sp. Anything with three electron domains is going to be sp2. Anything with four electron domains is going to be sp3. So let's go back and do some more examples. So we have, here we have carbon tetrachloride. That looks like this. So hopefully you remember this is a nonpolar. All these things cancel. But what is a hybridization? We've got to count our electron domains. So we have 1, 2, 3, 4 electron domains. So we have four electron domains. And you see I also drew the structure here because I like the structure on this side because they show how it actually looks. And it's like it's got the three atoms at the bottom that sort, sort of form a tripod, and it's got the one atom that sticks up. They didn't do the lone pair electrons. I didn't like that part. But what would be the hybridization on this? Hopefully you would select sp3. Let's do a couple more. This is acetylene. Acetylene is C2H2. Now, really, you could do the electron domains around each carbon. So this carbon here and this carbon's here. So we'll sort of look at it from that perspective. So how many electron domains are on this carbon? You count one. And the triple bond counts as one, two. So there's two electron domains around this carbon. Now, how did you do the second carbon? Well, this electron triple bond is counted yet again. So that's one, and there's two. So there's two electron domains around that carbon as well. So the electron domains is two, regardless of which carbon we're looking at. And the shape around each carbon is going to be, or the hybridization around each carbon is sp. And that goes along with the linear shape. Let's do another one. Here we have sulfate. I forgot to mention it. The, a lot of the ones I'm picking out right now are on the handout we worked out to, we worked on today in class. So if you want to pull that out, you can just uh, write the hybridization and look at those as, as we go through these. This is a sulfate uh, molecular drawing of the sulfate polyatomic ion. Let's count the electron domains. One, two, three, four. Four electron domains means you have one S. So let's do electron domains. That's up there. You've got one S. You're going to have three p orbitals, so that, that would be sp3. Let's do another one. This is BEH2. I've got that right here. BEH2 would have one, two electron domains. And with two electron domains, you use one s and one p orbital, so it's called sp. Let's do another one. This is thiocyanate ion, polyatomic ion. So you've got, we wanted to look at the electron domains around your central carbon. So you count the single bond as one. The triple bond counts as one. So you have two electron domains. And so if two electron domains, that will always be 1s and 1p, so sp hybridization and linear. 
and here we have uh, Cl2O. Now for this one you're going to have electron domains. So let's count those. You have one, two, three, four electron domains. So four electron domains. Anytime you have four electron domains, that would be sp3 hybridization. Notice this is a good example. The electron geometry for, geometry for this would be tetrahedral, but the molecular geometry would be bent with less than less than 109.5 degrees.